hearing stories, real stories from, you know, real women is still difficult for some men to mm -hmm. handle. Um, they don't want to see a woman be angry. They don't want to see a woman cry. They want someone like Kristen Bell to be happy and Princess Anna all the time, and that's not her reality. She's a real woman who has mm -hmm. many different emotions. Why don't we have more female filmmakers? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna bet that it changes this year. Because mm -hmm. everywhere I look, everyone's like, female director, female director, female director. But, you know, Hollywood is an industry that is steeped in tradition. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, women have not had the voices they have deserved over the years. There have been portrayals of women that haven't felt quite real or quite true. And I think that we as women are finding our voices in such a collective way on screen, off screen, out of the movie industry, et cetera, these days that like we're getting such an opportunity to, to get recognized, to tell our stories, to be who we are and have our truth out there. And I think the fact that we're using our voices is mm -hmm. the first step um, and then getting grumpy old uh, white men to listen to us will be the next. <laughs>And before you knew you were going to direct, I heard you were looking for female directors. Mm -hmm. So why did you think it was important for this story to be helmed by a woman? You know, I set out from writing the script to create a three-dimensional female character, someone who would feel real to me, to any woman who is watching it. And I think that, you know, although there are more female directors now, in the past, you know, sometimes when a male director has created a female character, mm -hmm. I haven't necessarily felt like it's the truest description of, of who I am and how I feel and how I would react in situations. And so it was important to me to have a, a woman tell mm -hmm. this story that was through the lens of a very, of a woman who was smart and emotional and was gonna be forced to go through this journey. I don't really care what you think. And I don't need you or anyone else worrying about me. I am someone who has these sort of like highs and lows in my life and you know I, I have a lot of really funny friends and I live with a comedian and I go to these outrageous things but I've also had you know I'm a human being who's mm -hmm. experienced life just mm -hmm. like anyone has and um, and while I was writing this movie it was sort of my mom has Alzheimer's disease and it was sort of when her disease was going to the next stage of how, how advanced it was and um, I was in a pretty dark place when I wrote it and um, that's how I put a lot of myself into it. And speaking of your mom, I know you've raised over $10 million with Hilarity for Charity for Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. We need a round of applause for that. Like, that is huge. So how important was it for you to kind of truthfully represent this disease on film? And was it a therapeutic process for you? Uh, totally therapeutic. I mean, honestly, my work luckily is emotional for me. I'm a writer, so like any type of writing, even if I'm not including an Alzheimer's storyline, feels therapeutic in some way because I'm sort of pushing emotions in it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but for me, you know, I've seen just historically, I feel like diseases like cancer, HIV, AIDS, heart disease, they've really been included in storytelling and television shows and movies. And I feel like that's really helped to sort of tear down the stigma that surrounds them and makes them part of the everyday conversation, which in turn turns to action mm -hmm. and funding and treatments and cures. And so for me, including accurate Alzheimer's stories is really important. And so I want to do that so it just pushes the conversation forward and makes it part of something that we're thinking about, therefore hopefully taking action about. <laughs>